Hey, this is Rick, and welcome back to SMARD58, that's Dreams 58 Backwards. Thanks a lot for uh, subscribing to my channel and watching me. I appreciate all the feedback and the thumbs up and the likes. From time to time, I do some DIY projects. This project I've been putting off for a while. I have some health issues you've seen in my other channel, and sometimes it takes me a while to get some things together. I have a house that's 17 years old, and I've been having some problems with the shower valve. It's either not regulating properly, it either goes completely hot, or completely cold it wouldn't regulate and I've been putting up with it for a while you either get scalded or you want to run away from it so I've gotten tired of it and I looked up the valve the valve is a sterling valve they're not even in business anymore unfortunately Kohler has picked them up and some of their products and some of their parts are compatible but with this particular one I've tried to get some parts and some numbers that may work so I'm gonna be your guinea pig on this project I'm gonna show you how to take the valve apart how to isolate it how to put the new parts in in and hopefully put it back together, energize it, and you'll be back in business with a new setup. If not, then the regulator valve is going to have to cut out of a wall that's a little more in depth. I'm hoping we don't have to get into that. I'm hoping we can just change out the inner parts to the valve and we're good to go. Let's hope. <laughs> now, I ran into a problem. Some of these diverter valves have thumb screws on them. You can go ahead and you can isolate the diverter valve by turning a little thumb screw with a screwdriver, usually a Phillips or a flathead. It has a little screw in there and it has a little valve in there on each side of the diverter. Unfortunately, mine doesn't have that. So I had to go downstairs, try to find the valves in the home to isolate this shower. Unfortunately, this house was built in 2002. They skimped and they didn't put any isolation valves in there. They just have the main shutoff valve that comes into the home. I to shut it down, drain the home down, go ahead and get some CPVC valves. I glued them in so I could isolate this bathroom and then I ordered my parts. Took about seven days to come in. Sometimes you can find your parts from the big box stores. Sometimes you can find them from plumbing supplies. I had no luck with that since this is discontinued. I had to order them online. Uh, you can get them from eBay, Amazon. I'll have links at the bottom of my page underneath the YouTube. You can link on that if you want to and you can research them. I'm going to be your guinea pig. So let's get started with this project. So let me show you what I had to do with those valves and how I had to cut them in and uh, so you can isolate this shower and I'll show you that right now. So just to show you nowadays with newer homes whether it be PEX piping or CPVC piping for your supply to your lavatories and your toilet your water closet there's absolutely no isolation valve no shut off valves in any of this stuff. That's why I had to cut some in. We had a problem with the shower it was leaking it didn't have any shut offs I had to shut the whole house down and put some isolation valves in. Okay, here's the isolation valves I cut in. I put in uh, two three quarter inch CPVC valves. That way I can separate the water to my master bathroom in case we have any problems. The builder didn't install these, so I went ahead and put these in because I needed to put them in so I could isolate that bathroom where I'm having a problem. And I would suggest everybody do this. If you have the time, drain your system down and put isolation valves on your plumbing, especially if it's CPVC or regular PVs. So let's go ahead and shut the valves now. There we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll pressure the lines up to here and check our joints and make sure they hold. Come over here to the main water valve. It's now filling the system up. All right, so we'll just feel around there. There's no problems, no drips. So the cold is good. We'll go ahead and we'll energize the hot water. Here's the hot water valve leaving the hot water tank. We'll go ahead and energize that. That didn't have that far to travel. All right, that gate valve's wide open. Come back over here. This is the hot side right here where I have the insulation on. And I do not see any drips, so those valves are good glue joints. Nothing coming out of the handles, so we're good. Now we'll move on to project upstairs, and then we'll have these valves to go ahead and open and pressure up that shower. Okay, so there you can see now we're ready to go. We've isolated the shower. Let's go ahead and start the project. Okay, this is the shower valve I was talking about. Like I said, this is Sterling. If you can read that right there. You have your, your valve right there. And of course your cold is over to the right and your hot is over to the left. I've already gone ahead and taken some of this apart. Uh, for the video, I put it back together so you have an idea how to do this. We're gonna pop this center piece out off here, this little trim protector here. 
And here you can see the square valve shaft right there. You're going to take these two short screws out. They're little Phillips screws like that. That'll pull the handle off. Then after that, you're going to have these two large uh, Phillips screws that go in here. That holds that protector plate on there, that uh, trim plate. And you see how long they are. They'll come out right here and here. And then that just pulls out like this. A little plastic piece will be right on there. Now we get right into the valve assembly itself. You're going to have four Phillips that hold that flange in place with an O-ring up against the actual diverter valve that's built in behind the shower here that's soldered in. So you take your Phillips screwdriver and you'll go around these and you'll take out these four screws. It's got one, two, three, four. Okay, we're on our last screw here. I would make sure you cover something on your shower drain so that it doesn't pop off and go right down the shower drain, like a towel or something. We'll pull this out. And here you have the regulator valve that comes out like that. It all comes out in one piece. You got another piece here. Little plungers in there. And there's an O-ring right there. And this O-ring looks like it's pretty old. It's got a little pinched area in it too. So that's been leaking also behind here. This is the uh, pressure balancing block that goes in there. The other piece here, this regulates it from hot to cold. And this balances out the pressures. So this block will pull right out. It's got two O-rings right on the face here. And you take that right out. This is the original sterling part. You may be able to try to find some O-rings and stuff for it. They go on the front and back here. But I'm going to order a replacement part. So this is the new replacement part. It's a little different. It said it's going to replace a GP500520. That was that original part that was in there. We're going to replace it with a GP800820. It's a little bit different, but from what I've read online, this will work. It's compatible. It gives you a little instruction on the back here. It shows you which way the O-rings go and all that. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we have to clean this out. So you're going to get yourself some like uh, vinegar, white vinegar or something that you can clean this out with a little scouring pad and you want to clean these surfaces up. Okay, so here we have the two pressure balancing valves. They definitely look a lot different. Uh, of course, this one probably costs a lot more money to manufacture the original one. I mean, it's got screws and it's heavy duty. It's a bigger block, but the footprint is exactly the same. There's the back, the sides. They definitely saved a lot more money on this. But supposedly this is the exact replacement part that was uh, replaced with the original. And of course it's Kohler now, but this is definitely substantially bigger than this. And even though it's still a $40 part, which is ridiculous, but that's what we got to deal with these days. So like I said, this slides right in here. It has a little like keyway, pops in there like that. And this one supposedly will do the same. And I guess it does. Locks in there like that. can't go the other way so you don't have to worry about putting it in wrong it goes in just like this you just got to make sure you have your o-rings on the front right here and on the back we'll do that so the other thing I would recommend is this uh, silicone grease you want to put that on your o-rings so it'll make them nice and pliable and they'll stick in there you want silicone you don't want to use any um, petroleum jelly that'll uh, actually dry out the rings and all. This will last for the life of the rings and keep it nice and pliable and rubbery. So what you want to do is just put a little bit out on your finger, rub it around on the new O-rings that you're going to put into your, your setup here, and you're good to go. So here's the back of your block here, and you're going to see you get an oval O-ring like that, and it looks like it's smaller, but once it pinches, it'll go in there, and it'll be oval like this. Go ahead and put your grease on there, and slide it in there, and it'll lock right in those grooves. Okay, so now we've done that. You can see the O-rings right in there they're fully seated look on your block here and you're going to see where it says cold right there so the cold is going to go on the on the right hand side of your shower valve so if you put it in this way it's going to be in the wrong direction you want to flip it over so the cold is now on that side this will be the cold side now your kit's going to come with o-rings on this side but i have the single lever cartridge for the regulator that's going on the other side here and i believe it already comes with them but i went ahead and put a little bit of uh, lubricant in there so they'll seat in there nice cold on this side Slide it right into the keyway. Let me make sure it goes all the way in, like that. Now it's all the way in there. 
Now I bought this. This is supposed to be a replacement part for Sterling. It's a 46-5300. Single lever cartridge. That's what that looks like. There's your adjustment valve right there. And it's got the O-rings already built into it. So we'll take that apart and we'll slide it right into there. This is the new lever. It's a uh, all in one composite built in. You can't take it apart. I went ahead and I uh, siliconed and lubricated the uh, O-rings that go in there. Now, when you look at this lever, it's going to say off right here. So since your off is to the right of your shower valve, you're going to want the off on the right hand side. You want your screws mounted upright like this when you go to put your trim back on. And these are your four mounting holes. So once that's in there like that, like so, this also has an O-ring around here. You want to lubricate that, put that back on. That's going to seal up against this. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll put our valve in. Make sure it lines up. And there you go. We'll go ahead and we'll put our four screws back in. Make sure that your O-ring isn't pinched. There we go. And like a tire on your car, you're going to alternate side to side. Okay, so as you start to tighten these up, just snug them. Don't go crazy. If it leaks a little bit, you can always snug it a little bit more. Don't want to crack that plastic or smash that O-ring in there. Okay, there we go. Now, what I would suggest before you put all your trim pieces on, go ahead and turn your valve onto your shower and see if this works. And there's no leaks all the way around here. Okay, so now we'll put all our trim pieces back on again in the reverse order I showed you in the beginning. And then we'll turn the shower on. Okay, so full disclosure, if that part I showed you doesn't work because it's an aftermarket part, then Kohler has this number available right there. It's a 5300FS. This is the pressure balance repair kit. It says it's new and it's a genuine Kohler part. It's identical to the aftermarket one, except I've heard some people have problems with the aftermarket one, so I'm gonna show this one also. You could just go ahead and purchase this, or you can purchase the aftermarket one. If you do purchase the aftermarket one and it doesn't work, you can get your money back and then go ahead and get the Kohler one or get the Kohler one to begin with. It's up to you. You can save a little bit of money. This was $30 shipped from Kohler directly to my house and the other one was like $15. So it's a half savings if, if that matters to you. But for full disclosure, I don't like to put uh, any misinformation out on my videos. Um, so you can try this one also. I don't like to show videos without uh, giving multiple fixes. If, um, if I find there may be one, so the other part number did work for my application, but this is also available from Kohler. Hopefully you can see that number right there. It's a GP71969. It's an official Kohler replacement part that will also work. It goes in the same way as I showed you the other one does. Pretty self-explanatory. And I'll show you now this is fixed with the other one that I showed in the video. Um, I've gone a couple days to make sure that there weren't any leaks. And I don't like to try to fudge my videos like some people do. So there's no leaks there. Hot and cold works fine. Shut it off. And that's just the water draining down the drain. And you can see that's slowing to a stop now. So hey, that's it. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you all watching my videos. Uh, click that button down there in the corner. You never know what kind of video I'm going to come up with next, whether it be DIY. Um, DIY has kind of slacked off uh, because of my health issues. But you never know what kind of video I'll have. It could be pet related, aquarium related. I kind of cover everything. My channel is uh, all encompassing and it doesn't really have uh, just one type of video. Take care. Share with your friends and give me some feedback. Let me know how you make out with your project. See you later.